Welcome to My Honest Truth, episode 52. In My Honest Truth, Dana Firth is an excellent, versatile writer with great range in the characters and events she writes about and in the emotions. She writes short stories and poetry. Among her works is a book of poetry called A Strange Malady and a short novel called The Magnum Opus. She has also contributed some literary comp to some literary compilations. Her works can be found by searching her name in the Amazon Kindle store or by going to her website, danafirth.com, which is spelled D-E-I-N-A-F-U-R-T-H dot com. She's also a mother who somehow finds time to be a nurse, and those are only a couple of reasons why I think she's a great person and even a hero. I'm happy to have Dana Firth as my guest today. Dana, how are you today? I am good. <laughs> well, that's good. What makes you good today? Um, it was a long day at work, but I got to come home and make my kids dinner, and now I'm on your show, so that's pretty cool. Are they asleep? They are, yep. Okay, well, you picked a good time for them to go to sleep. Um, <laughs> what's, the, what's the hardest part about writing for you? Uh, finding the time. Um, I am a nurse, like you said, and that is a lot of hours in a week. And between the commute and just spending time at work, sometimes overtime, and then coming home, you know, you're tired. So trying when to you find are time. when you are writing, like, are there are, are there obstacles that you run into when you're in the middle of a story? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's that kind of like dead zone in the middle sometimes where you're just like trying to figure out how to keep the plot moving, but also like just yeah. kind of having that, you know, that entertaining area where you build the story. Screenwriters call it the second X slump. Yep. Yeah. It's what, do you do, what do you do when you're stuck in your writing? Usually I have to take time away from it because if I try to force myself, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Oh, do you write, out, do you write outlines? Why or why not? I have, I've done it both ways. Um, I write outlines and I try and stick to it, but I usually find myself going somewhere else. So I try and be organized. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you like writing character driven stories or plot driven stories? That's kind of a question that I've always disliked. No offense. Um, and that's just because I find them both to be very important in a story. I love my characters, but I also feel like plot needs to be pretty compelling or no one's going to want to read it. I want to just go back a little bit. And uh, um, regarding outlines, did you write an outline when you wrote the story, The Birth of an Outlaw? I liked that story a lot. And I'm just Curious how you wrote that one. I did not. Um, this was when I was working for a marketing company, and I would just take these short lunch breaks and write a story. Okay, so The Birth I of an Outlaw really... is one of the four free short stories on her website, danafirth.com, D-E-I-N-A-F-U-R-T-H.com. Um, yeah. Villains or heroes? Which do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> villains <laughs> Why? because you can make them more complex i don't know heroes can be anti-heroes and stuff too but i just like villains now do you like villains in stories that you watch on tv as well yeah i'm always like trying to analyze them and figure out something compelling versus you know good versus evil black versus white that sort of thing okay are there any characters or stories you miss writing tell us that i miss that I miss writing? Yeah, anything you've written in the past that you miss writing. <laughs> well, you've known me a long time. Yes, so you know I'm, that I, I'm aware of one, but I, I don't know if I should mention the title because, because of reasons. You can. It's, I mean, it's not on the well, internet. Well, the reason anymore. is because, like, you know, um, you're using a pen name currently, and I don't want to say your real name, and be, because I don't know if you'd allow me to. Um, yeah, I prefer not to have like my real name out there, but the one you're probably thinking of, it doesn't have my real name attached to it. It's not on the internet anymore. So, oh, well, it was I, did, I did a web comic and I do miss that one a lot because that was a lot of fun. It was about magical boys. I loved that one and I wanted it to continue for a long time. Yeah, but I uh, wish so. <laughs> you did that one with your sister, and uh, yep. you guys both have very different lives now. 
Um, do you have a favorite place to write? I sort of just kind of have to do it wherever I can. If I could, I would probably sit in my room because I have these huge windows that overlook, like I live in Southeast Alaska, so it overlooks the ocean and like the forest and the mountains and all this stuff. I would love to write there, but I'm usually up here. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I've written some stuff too and I, I'd love to write out by some body of water. Water is inspiring for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, Okay, so this next question, I'm not sure how to ask it. Have you abandoned other works in progress? Tell us about some and why you abandoned them. Um, I was doing one called Gray Around the Edges for a while, which was kind of a fantasy Western. And I abandoned it because I couldn't quite get the theme that I wanted. It just seemed like, you know, when you genre, like try and blend genres, like sometimes it fits really well and sometimes you're just like, you know, square peg, round hole. That's kind of what it was. And I also, I recently came back to it, but for a long time, I'd walked away from an anthology of short stories kind of inspired by Lovecraft, so. You're wearing a Cthulhu shirt. I am. <laughs> Cthulhu is awesome. Yes, I, I really like Lovecraftian horror. <laughs> I, I, I'm bad at, like, unless I have recently read those words, like relay or whatever those words are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless I've recently read them, I can't quote them. Um, do you like sharing your writing? Yeah, not really. I'm I'm so introverted. It's hard for me to share stuff that I feel strongly about because if someone criticizes it, I'm, I take it way too personally, you know? <laughs> well, you've got a lot of, you've got several stories on uh, short story flash fiction society website mm -hmm. uh, one of them is called the menagerie i like that one it's good um, would you mind telling my little audience a little bit about what that story is about so the menagerie is a very short like a flash fiction story about a girl named helena who goes to visit some oracles because she has a question to ask. Um, she wants to know her future because her family has been cursed. Um, they all go mad eventually. And only one person is allowed to be in the menagerie at a time and she gets in and she's pregnant. And so it's just kind of about like how she asks this question. I think that's a oracles good part rules. to stop telling what it's about. I'm not going into the ending. <laughs> yeah. Which isn't really that big of a twist, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know, um, Sorry, I gotta... Yeah, I've got my coffee here. I've got my coffee. At this time of night? <laughs> I actually, um, back when I used to write a lot, I uh, would drink like a lot of coffee right before going to bed even. Um, do you listen to music while writing? Sometimes, yeah. And I have to ask you, even though I think I know the answer, what kind of music do you like to listen to while writing? Depends on the type of scene. Oh. <laughs> you know, if you're writing an action scene, you got to listen to some epic music. If you're writing kind of a more tender scene, I don't know, I usually listen to more like industrial. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, do you like those square soft epic battle musics? Oh, yeah. Like back from Final Fantasy in the golden age of yeah, MMOs. yeah. <laughs> I had to give a plug to them because of reasons. Um, where do you get inspiration from? Everywhere. Um, well, yeah, your I'll stories hear... are they're quite Sorry. versatile. You, you, you write about a lot of different things. Like the other night I read one of your stories where a uh, father uh, took his daughter to the grave of the mother who died in the Iraq war. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I read that one the other night, and uh, I and, and I think you're very versatile because you wrote the emotions that I even, as a guy, think that the father would have had. Mm. Um, so anyway, I interrupted your answer. Uh, if you could, oh, <laughs> um, can you say it again? <laughs> where do you get inspiration from? Uh, where do I get inspiration from? Um, sometimes it's just like looking at people and I make up stories about them. Like I wonder what their lives are like, or sometimes, um, a dream, sometimes other things I've read or watched. And sometimes I just do prompts like certain words. And then I write something around that word or theme. Cool. 
How do you develop your ideas? A lot of thinking. I, I, like I was saying earlier, I try to plot. Um, it usually doesn't work out that well. I kind of get ideas as I go and then I run with them. So it just takes a lot of letting it mull, you know? From the stories that you've written that I've read, I do think you have plotted very well. I think that the pacing is really well done and everything like that. Um, that's just... Um, <laughs> so give us a piece of advice about anything. Anything in life or Any, writing? <laughs> about anything. Just a piece of advice. My advice to literally anybody would be to take care of yourself because I don't care what you want to do in the world, whatever you want to do, you could want to play banjo under a bridge or you could want to be a neuroscientist, but you got to take care of yourself. My seven viewers will appreciate that. <laughs> um, it's good. I'm a nurse. You can listen to that advice. <laughs> yeah. You like to collaborate? I do. Yeah, I collaborate with Mary a lot. Yeah, Mary Poppins. Uh, she's yep. on Short Story Flash Fiction Society. Um, if you don't mind me going on a tangent, how did you meet? How did you get involved with them? With Mary? Yeah. Um, so she had a flash fiction contest when shortly after I wrote the magnum opus, which is the novella that you mentioned. Yeah, earlier. yeah. Um, that's that's a short novel that I really enjoyed, but. Um, uh, could you tell the audience a little bit about what that's about? Okay, uh, so that one is about, it's sort of like a Prometheus style um, story where this inventor makes a doll, like a an automaton sort of, um, and he wants a companion. So he specifically makes her for love, yeah. essentially. And she, of course, gets her own personality and her own wishes and, and that's enough to hook and, yeah and and um, things go awry <laughs> and uh my seven viewers can buy that at uh the amazon kindle store searching your name d-e-i-n-a firth.com f-u-r-t-h um it's, it's it's i like the story i enjoy reading it but um like you mentioned earlier i've kind of in some ways known you for a long time and I enjoy a lot of what you do. So I might not be the best person to advertise you. <laughs> um, describe your favorite tropes. My favorite tropes. Oh, I guess I just like the whole like hero's journey, I like the predictable kind of um, plots. I, I guess I don't really have favorites. I don't really know if the hero's journey even counts, but you can take that. <laughs> no, but I, I, I take it because uh, because of lots of reasons. I think that's a very good answer. Um, what writers make you love reading? Gail Carriger, um, Terry Pratchett. I like... well, the first one you mentioned, uh, can mm -hmm. you name something that that person wrote? Gail Carriger wrote the Solus series, um, so and the Parasol Protectorate series. So it's um, steampunk and okay, yeah. it's got like werewolves and vampires and all sorts of stuff in it. It's fun. That's awesome. Um, okay, so at one point I saw you post on Facebook about a Star Wars novel that you were enjoying um, quite a while ago. Uh, um, do you like Star Wars stuff? I do like Star Wars. I don't remember posting about a Star Wars novel I was reading. No, I, I think you did, but hmm. yeah. so have you read? But I do like Star Wars. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I think I can't remember the author, but it, I don't know when it was. Never mind. Um, when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? Probably when I was about ten, or maybe even younger. I loved writing stories and making movies and stuff. And I, I knew from a very young age. Um, did you, um, did you check the time when I started recording? No. No. Nope. It was probably around 8.30. It was right on time, so. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, how long did it take you to write the magnum opus? Maybe a month. Okay. That's probably one of the faster things I've ever written, which 
surprised me. Yeah, because it's one of the longer ones. Yeah. Yeah, so th that's, that's cool. Uh, what is your work schedule like when you're writing? Um, sort of just fitting it in when I can. So I will usually, if, if I'm working that day, then I write maybe for an hour at night. If I'm not working, then I can kind of write throughout the day in little bits and pieces. Cool. The uh, screenwriting program that I used to use when I wrote all that stuff a long time ago, um, it just suddenly, for some reason, started working again on my newer computer. It used to be defunct, but for some reason, it just started working again. And hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm going to start back into writing soon. Oh, that's good. <laughs> What would you say is your interesting writing quirk? My interesting writing quirk? Yeah. <laughs> Probably that I, if I get frustrated, I will just start writing nonsense. And sometimes it's a bunch of F-bombs and whatever. And then I just highlight it. And then I go back and like delete it or change it later. <laughs> yeah. But I feel fresh minded again. <laughs> in randomness, you might find a good idea. Sometimes I do. And I do that with academic papers, too. I just have to be careful to take it back out. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I, I read an article about that a while ago, like uh, people that study intense theoretical things, they uh, sometimes they just uh, put a bunch of randomness out there and see if anything connects to what they're studying. And sometimes some big advancements in science have been made that way. Um, yeah. I read an article about that, but I can't go into more specifics right now. Um, <laughs> your Kindle eBooks are self-published. Have you considered submitting a manuscript to an established publishing house? Yes, I have, but I wanted it to be a novel and not like an anthology or something like that. And unfortunately I have not finished any of like the three novels that I've started, so. So you have started three novels? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish you the best of luck in finishing at least one of them. Thank you. Hopefully all of them. Hopefully one day. Where do you get your information or ideas for your stories? Like I was saying earlier, like kind of everywhere. I will make up stories about people. Sometimes that comes through. But a lot of times it's sort of meshes of like whatever I've been into lately. Okay, cool. Um, when did you write your first story that you were really proud of as a writer and how old were you? Hmm. Probably, it was probably shown in Chikara. So that was that web comic that I mentioned and it's a different kind of writing, but my sister was very proud of that. I, one thing I liked about shown in Chikara is that even though you guys were like teenagers when you wrote it, um, there <laughs> was some adult language that uh fit in with the story and made it pop but uh but uh it was in there and you guys were like teenagers when you wrote it and you yeah. just didn't care yeah was, and eventually was... got into some pretty dark territory but we never got that far yeah. um so yeah i was like i think i was 16 15 or 16 when we started that so cool yeah what do you like to do when you're not writing i like to play i my biggest hobby is playing like World of Warcraft, <laughs> sometimes Final Fantasy fourteen, but cool. So, uh, but as the years change, the video games also change. But there will always be a video game that you're into. Yes, I've always been a gamer. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, have you ever considered Twitch streaming? On and off, yeah, but I don't think I could commit to a regular enough schedule to like get anywhere with it. Yeah, so. but you can make money that way. You can. It's hard. It's a lot of hard work. My, my one of my good friends streams. I think you might have the. I think you might have the creativity to make a stream that make a stream that gets money. <laughs> I think you might. Well, thanks. Maybe someday. <laughs> um, what does your family think of your writing? My family is proud that I am creative, but let's be real: most people don't read what you write they're like oh cool and then they don't read it <laughs> you know yes boy boy do i know what that's like <laughs> exactly <laughs> what was 
What was one of the most surprising things you learned in creating your stories and poems? I did not catch all of that. Can you repeat it? What was one of the most surprising things you learned in creating your stories and poems? Probably that I actually really like, especially for poetry, like I really like the kind of puzzle aspect of poetry and putting pieces together. I never really thought I would enjoy that part of it. I thought it would be frustrating for me, but some I like of the, it. Some of the poems in your book, A Strange Malady, uh, some of them um, resonate with me. Um, and uh, I don't want to go into further detail on a public video. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad they resonated with you, though. It's, so, uh, yeah, you're a talented, them are intensely personal. So. <laughs> you're a talented writer, and I'm glad that you shared them. Um, of your Kindle ebooks, which is your favorite? The Magnum Opus. Yeah, that's what I would have picked too if I were you. Because <laughs> that's like <laughs> that's like a nearly fifty page novel and it's it's good. It's 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 got depth. It's, I like it. Um, do you have any suggestions to help a viewer of this video to become a better writer? If so, what are they? Everyone's gonna hate me for it, but just write. I mean, yeah, you just got to practice writing because nothing makes you better other than doing it, you know? <laughs> do you hear from your readers much? What kinds of things do they say? I do occasionally, more so on my Facebook page. When I update it, I'm not very good about it. But um, usually we just joke around. Like they know that I'm a person with a sense of humor and that's how I relate to people. So what do you think makes a good story? solid planning for the plot whether you're a pantser or a, an actual plotter like I mean an actual plot that makes sense and making characters that have flaws no perfect characters that's like my biggest pet peeve <laughs> as a child what did you want to do when you grew up when I was very little I wanted to be a wolf biologist cool <laughs> um, I like wolves <laughs> yeah um with the uh, intro that I'm going to tack on the front of this video, this has pretty much been about 22 minutes, and which is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you very much for participating in this. And uh, her, tell the audience where they can find your books. You can find them on my website at danaforth.com, as you mentioned, D-E-I-N-A-F-U-R-T-H.com, or on Amazon. You can just search my name. You'll find them there. Okay. Um, again, thank you for participating in this. And um, uh, sometime when there's no reason or excuse, I'd like to Zoom chat with you again about some other stuff. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Thanks, uh, talk to you later. <laughs> All right. Bye.